Hello and welcome to the Flickering Torch and today we're going to talk about safeguards in your RPG. Now safeguards are one of these things that originally I didn't think was so important and now the more people I've played with and sort of the more games I've played as a GM, the more I've realised how important this is to our hobby and the more I've realised how important it is as a GM to have at least a safeguard in place. The reason I'm talking about this this week is I had an experience recently where I was playing in a game and a fellow player was looking a little bit uncomfortable during the game and afterwards I approached them, made sure they were okay, and they said yeah, it was just getting a bit heavy in the moment for them. However, that could have gone an entirely different way, and I think it's really important to have one or two of these in place, especially one that you can get out straight in the middle of the game, to just help everyone have the same amount of fun that you're having. Now I am going to preface this by saying you can certainly run any kind of story you want to run in your role-playing game. There's some subjects I wouldn't ever tackle in a million years, but I'm not saying don't tackle them. What I'm saying is you need to make sure your players are also comfortable tackling these things, and if they are, that's totally cool. But maybe still just have one of these just in case someone in the moment feels like this is a bit much. It's like when people are watching stuff on DVD like Saw, they can always pause it, take a break, turn it off if it was getting too much for them. They might originally have signed up for uh, a Saw movie, but they always have the option to leave or pause or just take a breather for a bit. And I think you need to kind of take the same approach here with your stories. So I'm not saying that you need to include every single one of these safeguards in your game. In fact, I think that would be pretty crazy if you did. I'm advocating for three. One before the session, one that you can just whip out at any time, and then a final one that I think maybe not do every session, but maybe do after every session that gets kind of heavy. Um, and I think that's a nice balance to strike instead of doing every single one of these, because we don't want to have more and more GM prep. And a lot of these are actually things that are very, very easy to set up and easy to do and easy to follow through. So basically, I'm going to show a few examples of things you can do before the game, one thing that you can do during the game, um, and kind of my opinions on, on, on a post-game thing that I think you should be doing, because uh, it gives you more than just the safeguard benefit. So first and foremost, I think the main thing is before the game. Make sure everyone's kind of comfortable with the themes that you want to run, um, and kind of have stuff there where you're like, this is kind of a cut-off point for, for the whole game. The first way, and I think probably the easiest and, and one that's going to be most familiar to most GMs, is just kind of like a disclaimer or a trigger warning. Kind of like you would see in Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition that kind of just says what kind of themes, what things we're exploring in the game, and if you're uncomfortable, maybe don't come sit at the table. This might sound harsh at first, but people should be able to gauge what they're comfortable with beforehand, and as such, just giving kind of information on the themes. You don't have to go into super, super specifics like in this session we're going to tackle this. You just kind of need like the broad themes and some scenes that might play out. Like, for instance, if you're playing Vampire Addiction is a massive, massive theme, so you need to tell players that up front in case they're uncomfortable with that as a theme or as a topic. The next thing I've stolen from BigBadCon.com, uh, and it's actually the next two things I've stolen from there, um, and this is called Lines and Veils. So, before session one, so in your session zero, you set up a series of lines and veils that the players know sort of what's going to happen. So, a line is a line in the sand that you will not cross. We're not even going to allude to the fact that this is happening. So, say a character has had a recent death of a pet. You might say, a line in the sand for this game, we're not going to talk about um, animals dying or, or something similar to that. And that is something you're just never going to touch, you're never going to allude to, it's never going to be like a background element. Okay, so you have these kind of lines that you do not cross and you're not going to touch. Now the next one, and I think this is a really, really good idea, is to set up veils. These are sort of issues that you're going to tackle, but things that you're quickly going to fade away from. So you might have, um, this is quite an extreme example, a player who doesn't like any violence, but they don't mind violence being in the story, they just want to kind of fade to black when that happens. So this would be kind of like a veil. Or you might have, say, a player who's scared of, I don't know, like spiders, and they don't mind spiders being there, but they don't want, like, big descriptions of everything that's going on. They kind of just want the cliff notes if, the, if they're there. So this kind of allows you to still tackle some difficult things in your story. Um, I'm not saying spiders are a difficult thing, that's just kind of a, an, an easy PG ex one for everyone. This allows you to tackle those themes without 
making a player so uncomfortable that they can't deal with the scene anymore. So I think Lines and Veils is a really, really, really good idea. So the next two things that I'm going to mention here are things that you can do midway through the game. Um, one is the black card system. I've also heard it called the X card system. Um, and this is essentially you give all the players, or if you're playing an online game, you, you come up with some emoji that you're going to post in the chat. When someone feels that they need to just take a break for a second and stop and kind of everyone needs to talk for a second about the scene that's going on um, and either stay away from it or stop talking about it entirely. Now, what I would suggest is maybe setting up two different cards, one that's we need to stop now, I, I don't want to see this at all, and one that's like, can we just stop, talk for a minute, I need to make sure that this is not going to go where I think it's going. Um, so I know in the Loom server we have uh, the the black box icon, that is kind of our, our black card or our X card. Um, or you just post that in chat, or you post that to your GM if you if you don't want people to know that it was you specifically who was uncomfortable. Um, and they'll be able to um, stop the game, pause it for a second, uh, figure out if everyone's okay, or, or just stop the scene entirely. Um, this kind of ambiguity, though, might be a problem. So what you might want to do is, like I said, have two different signals. I think this is a really, really clean and easy method. Um, and then we've got another one, and this comes from uh, Nordic LARP circles. Um, so this is cuts and breaks. So this is the player audibly saying something, like cut or slamming their hands down on the desk or something like that. And a cut is called when someone feels unsafe about a certain situation. Um, and at that point, everyone stops exactly what they're doing straight away. Okay, so you've got a cut, so now it's a break. So a break can be called, and this essentially asks all the players and the GM to steer away from that topic so it's not saying oh stop what you're doing right now it's saying kind of oh I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable I'm fine for now but can we steer this in a different direction so this kind of has the benefit of um, the X card system but also adds in um, kind of a way that if you're feeling like I'm fine now but I know this is gonna get dodgy and I just want you all to know that I want to steer away it gives you like very quick I guess the correct term would be like a vernacular. It gives you like a quick signal that, oh, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Can we can we curve around this without you having to stop everyone and say that? I think this is a really interesting one. Um, cut and break is probably something that I'm going to push that we kind of move toward in our Discord server because I think it's super intuitive because you have the straight away, no, stop, can we stop? I can't do this. But we also have the kind of, oh, this is getting a bit dodgy for me. Can we Can we kind of steer away? Finally, and this is kind of a thing that I do in my games, not just for safeguarding, but kind of just to see how I'm doing uh, as a GM, like how my actual GMing is working if everyone's having fun, um, is like a post session or every three sessions or five sessions or just after every super heavy session, like heavy role play, something big has happened. Um, just have like a little tribunal, a little, a little talk after the session specifically about the game. Um, obviously everyone after a game will, will talk about like oh the week how the week's been what we're doing in the next week um, but you need to talk specifically about the things that happen in the game uh, a tribunal is something I stole from Runehammer but um, a tribunal or like a post game chat essentially um, where you're just kind of making sure everyone's on track everyone's having fun um, everyone feels like they're being kind of treated fairly I know as a GM I like to do plot twists on characters backgrounds um, so I all, all really like to do this to be like, hey man, this is the reason that I did this. Uh, I hope you're okay with it. Can you change some stuff up if it's not working for you? This and the cut and break, I think, are something that you should definitely implement as soon as possible. The disclaimer as well is, so these things are quite easy to implement because it's just have a little chat afterwards. And I think it's super helpful for the players and yourself just to kind of know everyone's on track, everyone's on board, and everyone's still having fun because the most important thing about our hobby is that everyone is having fun. So these are just some of my ideas for safeguards and why I think they're really, really important. Um, I'm going to kind of push more for them in my games. I'm going to try and um, explain them more to people because I just think it makes the hobby better for everyone. You can make sure everyone's having a good time. And again, I'm not saying don't tackle difficult things. I'm saying, yeah, go ahead, tackle those difficult things. Just make sure everyone is on board with you doing that and everyone's having fun while you do that. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, I really want to know what kind of safety measures you put in your games, what kind of safety tools 
um, you guys have got. It's one of those things that when you start off GMing, you don't really think you need, um, but it's one of those things that you really need when you really need it. I've been The Flickering Torch, and remember that Blades in the Dark Red Herrings is streaming every Monday at 7.30 British Standard Time on twitch.tv slash The Flickering Torch, and all the videos are here if you want to watch them in a big playlist. Uh, follow me on Twitter at, at Flickering Torch, uh, and I'll catch you guys next time. Happy gaming.